Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the Andrew Stuttle Podcast. We get a little dab of cleanness on my hands, and we are ready to go. Today, as of this recording, is February 16th, 2021. Uh, just want to say that so far, the year has been kind of calm, you know, relaxed, and, you know, we're... Ah, yes. Not so much drama as... Since he's not not in the office anymore, we'll just call him the man that we will not discuss, and we will go forward with that. But enough about all the politics and all that. Let's get into. Well, I shouldn't say that. We we do have a couple things that are political in here, but let's get into some stuff. So I want to wish everybody a belated happy Valentine's Day. Uh, I love myself. <laughs> I don't know what else to say on that subject matter, so we're just going to keep going, because I don't know what else to say to that. I love myself. Uh, I hope you love yourself as well. And I hope you had a good Valentine's Day. And moving on to the next subject. So, the the heat heated subject this week, the new subject this week, that's been an ongoing thing in the media, is, I believe, Framing Britney Spears, which is a documentary that you can watch on Hulu. Um, <clears throat> I have seen bits and pieces of it, some clips and all that. Uh, I, I think that that's something I should d- just mention right now. Obviously, you know, the media, you know, just ignored her mental health and all that and yada yada, which is what mainly the documentary that I hear is about. And, uh, I just want to say I will, I will move forward and probably drop a review for that if I can, if I deem that it's something I think should get a review if it's good enough but however i do want to say yes britney spears's mental health was uh <clears throat> ignored but not really ignored it was you know basically you know they made fun of her her breakdowns and you know her controversy and all that and you know i, I i'm just glad that we can now we're in a space where her mental health is taken seriously and everybody looks at all the facts and Instead of, you know, this and that, we're just, uh, let's just face facts. We are in a better place with mental health now than when that happened. So now everybody, of course, is looking at that differently. And I, I'm looking at this completely differently, obviously, as an adult, because that happened when I was very young. You know, I, I didn't even know what mental health really was. That was never discussed. Like, what in the world is mental health? Now it's like, oh, Wow. There was a lot to unpack there. So, yeah, I will check out the documentary and I will give you my thoughts later. Maybe in the podcast episode instead, maybe later. We'll see. Uh, However, a documentary that I do think is worth talking about in kind of a weird same vein sort of type of thing is the HBO documentary Tiger. Uh, So I had not seen this documentary. It came out in January and I saw part one of the Tiger Woods documentary. So, as somebody who was a avid, active fan of Tiger Woods before pre-controversy or in, the, or in the early 2000s, you know, Tiger Woods, let's face it, was a big fucking deal. You know, he broke barriers in, in the industry. You know, he he got deals everywhere. You know, this dude was killing it. And we obviously have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is... The cheating scandal. Uh, he did indeed cheat on his wife. He did apologize. Um, thankfully, I, I I'm happy he's now in a place where he he now can see his child again, which is pretty awesome. That there is like a custody thing with that. I'm I'm happy that that's been rearranged. But this documentary, at least in the first part, um, discusses his relationship with his father and how his father. You know, at a young age, I I, I got weird Michael Jackson vibes from this because like his dad basically ever since he was a child put Tiger in this position to, you know, push him to be a professional golfer since the beginning. And as an outsider who had only been a casual fan as a, a, you know, kid not being not being able to look up this information and, you know, know all the facts 
It was very intriguing and interesting to learn from a documentary standpoint and to look up everything that, you know, Tiger Woods did have a weird childhood where he was, you know, basically kind of Michael Jackson in to the industry. And, you know, I got to say, it's really eye opening to see something like this. And who knows if 100 percent of it is facts or not. However, I, w- I would challenge everybody to go watch the documentary because when you watch it and you look at the old archived videos of Tiger with his dad, um, <clears throat> you can kind of see him like looking away and, and not having interest in the, the, the thing he's doing. And you'll feel very conflicted. I, I felt very conflicted because I felt like, you know, he was – being cheated out of a childhood but may but you know we don't know the full story obviously this is being told from many sides you know and tiger's dad wasn't the best influence he cheated on his wife you know this and that there's so much to unpack here but that was one of the more interesting things i i thought about after watching it was wow he he really never really did like have a child or have like the best role model for a father you know and it was kind of crazy to to learn that from this documentary. Now, does that, the real question is, does this view of, of, of him that I have make me forgive him for cheating on his wife? Um, no, because Tiger Woods was an adult, you know, now when that had happened. Um, but it does make me feel very conflicted about said thing that happened later, later on in his life, you know, but, you know, I, I feel like everybody, when they watch this, is going to feel many different emotions. You might cry a little over certain things that get said in this documentary. You might get angry. You might be happy to see the success that Tiger Woods got later in his life. Just in general, when you watch it, and I want to say this, it, it definitely does keep your attention. It's not boring. It's very well put together. It, it, if you got an hour and a half... I would recommend this if you are no don't know nothing about don't know don't know nothing if you don't know anything about sports and like you want to know more about Tiger Woods you know do you want to know more <laughs> Starship Troopers reference you will definitely really enjoy this documentary now it's up to you to look up is it 100% factual is it correct is this 100% true that's up for debate, whether or not all of it's true. They basically point out a lot of facts that are true and that I have looked up about his childhood and everything. And there's like notes from his ex-girlfriend that are shown on the screen, which is a whole other thing how Tiger wasn't, after a while, not able to have a, the girlfriend that you know he wanted to have. You know He wasn't allowed to be himself. That's a whole other angle that you, I don't know how you're, 100% you're going to be able to research that you know, in your own way, but you know, <clears throat> you might be able to find some information about that. But on a documentary standpoint of informing you, an outsider, on the Tiger Woods situation uh, and making you feel something other than what the media wants you to think directly from, like, the news outlet way, well, you're probably going to feel very conflicted about this and you're going to have a lot of different things going on in your mind while you watch this. But, yeah, I, if I had to give it a rating... It, so far from part one, it's definitely like an eight out of like 10, you know, there's like small things that bother me, but you know, otherwise it was, it was a pretty well put together documentary and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, go ahead. Check that thing out, man. That's my recommendation of the week. <clears throat> Moving on to, if I can find my bell here, it's too far. I, oh, no, there it is. Hold on folks. Bear with me. Oh, I'm ringing the bell. It is a controversial topic. One more time. Controversial topic time. Uh, <laughs> so Gina, I'm going to see if I can say this right, even though I shouldn't have to say it right. Gina, I, you know what, Gina, we'll, we'll say, we'll call her Gina Corian or however the hell you say her fucking stupid ass name. So basically, uh, if you didn't know Gina, you know, from Deadpool to, and you know, the Mandalorian. <clears throat> um, yeah, so everybody was all on board for Gina to be uh, in The Mandalorian. They thought it was a good thing at the beginning. 
And then the pandemic hit, and we saw the true side of her politically and, uh, <clears throat> you know, where she stands in the pandemic, uh, all these right-winged, you know, opinions that go this way, and, you know, I will say this right now. First of all, if you go one way or the other on the political spectrum, um, first of all, I, I respect your choice. That is your choice. And do not think that I am telling you you cannot go either way. With all that said, uh, I think she said a lot of statements about masks that were not true without any evidence. Um, she made a lot of insensitive posts about said things. Um, <clears throat> her... I'm not going to say what she posted on Instagram, the word, because I bet you if I say it, YouTube is going to take this video down, so I will not say it. But the post that did get her taken down, um, you can argue that there was some point trying to be quote-unquote made. Um, if there was any point that was quote-unquote trying to be made about, oh, this and that, uh, the way she conveyed that way, that, that, bah, bah, bah. can't even talk today. The way she conveyed that in that post that said Instagram story post was completely out of line, completely insensitive, completely idiotic. It was downright dumb. And you can go ahead and say, oh, but Pedro Pascual made some similar posts. No, two separate things, two different things, completely different things. She was trying to convey something in her own way that went towards this way. And Pedro Pascual was trying to make a point about something else that was definitely not leaning this way at all. And, you know, <clears throat> the way she just, you know, conveyed that was dumb. I, I, I don't have, I, I, I can't say anything else that anybody else has already said. She has been making arrogant, idiotic posts for, like, months now. And the fact that Disney didn't fire her before for any of this and gave her chances, you know, that's blows my fucking mind that anybody gave her a chance. <sighs> and now she's working with Ben Shapiro, which I could discuss, but you know, I just said his name and that alone is enough attention that I've just given Ben Shapiro and I have nothing more to say than that. And we will be moving on to a subject that is less controversial. Get rid of that damn bell. All right, so the Super Bowl. Let me discuss the positive of the Super Bowl that happened. Uh, <laughs> well, the weekend's halftime show was pretty cool. I enjoyed all the performances and all the songs that he did. You know, uh, everybody's talking about the uh, quote-unquote bandages that are being called toilet paper or whatever, or underwear. You know, that's a, that's a lame diss. Uh, if you have not listened to After Hours, uh, do yourself a favor. Uh Bless your ears and your eyes with visuals from After Hours that are 100% worth your time because it is a beautiful album. The Weeknd is a great artist. You should absolutely support his music. I just want to say this, though. The Weeknd's halftime show, I don't think he could have done it any better. Uh, maybe some songs from Kiss Lane would have been nice, but, you know, I get it. He had wanted to make a statement with his uh, halftime show, and... Uh, you know, definitely the statement with the, everything from the After Hours era was definitely, you know, d don't try and perfect something that you think is imperfect when you're already perfect the way you are. I definitely think that that's what the message of the the the, the whole performance was. That's definitely the per the message of After Hours with all the you know the prosthetics and you know the the makeup effects and you know. You know, surgery and all that. Yeah, it's definitely that, you know. And maybe I'm not saying it 100% how The weekend would want to say that message, but that's definitely what I got out of it. So, yeah, I definitely love the halftime show. Let's talk about the negatives. Um, <clears throat> uh, as somebody who is a casual sports goer, um, this game was just awful. Uh, the fact that Kansas City was getting flags left and right for things that were just minor things was just ridiculous. That was just stupid. And I think that that's all that anybody else can think about it. You know, whatever, you know, support Tom Brady and all that. I, I could get into his political beliefs and all that, yada, yada. Well, 
you know, I feel like enough people have already discussed that, and I, I, I got nothing to add as a casual sports fan. You know, the game was bullshit. That's just my opinion. Psh. Moving on to something I, I suppose kind of funny, kind of not. So over the weekend, <laughs> over the weekend, over the last couple of days, we had... You know, I'm collecting my thoughts, people. Let me collect my thoughts. (laughs) Now that Andrew is back on track. Okay, so there was this woman who put, like, Gorilla Glue all over her hair to, like, you know, slick it back and, you know, have it stick like that. So I guess for some reason she thought, like, you know, whatever, Gorilla Glue is going to come off, which, listen, come on. Come on. Don't don't be an idiot. Gorilla glue is not meant to go in your hair. Don't put it on there. So not only did she do that, she freaked out, uh, went to the hospital to get it off, and was worried about the hospital bill, which is, ugh, okay, whatever, you know, like, okay, you shouldn't have done this in the first place, but, you know, at least you know you need to go to the hospital to get it off. So she, uh, somebody, I don't know if it was her directly, somebody set up a GoFundMe page to... Uh, you know, get pay for her surgery. So happily, when they went there, when she went there to the hospital, they decided to tell her, "Oh, you know, we'll do the surgery for free, get it off of you." So it seemed like everything was all well and ha- happy dory, hunky dory. You know, she finally got the gorilla glue off. You know, end of the story, moral of the story. Okay, move on. Don't do that. And bye, goodbye. All right, goodbye, everybody. Do do the thing. Goodbye. The story's over. <clears throat> um, she decides to, <laughs> I wish I was making this shit up. She decides to try and s- sue Gorilla Glue for claiming that, you know, that's their fault. That stuck to her head. Let me just talk to this woman directly right now. Listen, I don't give a fuck what your name is. I'm just going to put that out in the forefront right now. You are a fucking idiot. If you thought putting Gorilla Glue on your motherfucking head was a smart idea, what the fuck is wrong with you? You really thought, oh yeah, no, let's stick that Gorilla Glue up there. Oh wow, it's got it on my hair all slicked back. All that, yeah. No. Look, I don't give a fuck what your name is. I know you're verified on Instagram and all that. Nah, no, fuck you. <laughs> You are a fucking idiot. That's all I need to say about this subject. Moving on. Let's discuss some movie news. Okay, so Tom Holland claims, let's put that in quotation marks, that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are not in Spider-Man 3. Now, here's why I am not keen and not going to be not going to bat an eye at Tom Holland saying something about this movie. As we have known, Tom Holland has spoiled things in the past for Marvel movies. So, let's take what he says with a grain of salt when he says, oh, these characters... Want... No. Sony, or whoever the hell, Marvel is just fucking with him and giving him a fake script. So the fact that he even came out and said, oh, these people won't be in this movie. Oh, shut. Shut up, man. We know that they're going to be in the movie. Literally, we know they're going to be in the movie. Because if you're saying it, the actor who spoiled things in the past in interviews, well, we know that they're lying to you. So we know they're probably going to be in the movie if other people and other trustable sources are actually saying it. So move on from that. So we get some sad, sad... Let's ring in the bell one time. Sad bell, sad bell this time. For Blue Sky Studios being shut down by Disney. Uh, Blue Sky Studios was famous for making the uh, Ice Age films. They have also made other films as well, such as the Peanuts film and many, many more that I could rattle off all day and tell you about. Uh, I I think that they were definitely uh, breaking away from the Ice Age films and and making some really solid material, like 
the Peanuts film was, if you haven't seen the Peanuts movie, first of all, from Blue Skies, dude, go see that movie. That's a beautiful flick. Like, not only is it a good Peanuts story, it's like the 2D blending with 3D animation, you know. <sighs> Man, that movie was too good for what they did. So, yeah, I absolutely love that movie. It really is an end to an era that we were, you know, Blue Sky, like, started in the early 2000s with, like, Ice Age and all that that cool stuff that they did. And now, you know, Disney bought Fox and Blue Sky Studios was part of Fox. And, you know, now we'll, we'll I, I, it's, it's in limbo of, will we ever see another Ice Age movie? I don't know. We'll probably get another Peanuts movie. Is it going to be through Blue Sky Studios? Probably not. It seems like right now they're focusing on, uh, Apple TV uh, products for the Peanuts with the Snoopy and you know, all that. So where do we go from here? Well, we just get a little sad because a really good animation company was shut down, and darn it, the mouse, the mouse shut him down again. So sad, so sad. Uh, let's move on to something I suppose a little bit more happier. <laughs> This is just something I want to talk about real quick. Uh, some Someone modded Super Mario 64 to look better with ray tracing. Now, I'm not familiar with what ray tracing is 100%. I believe it's a modification that you can do to make old games look a little bit better and all that jazz. Um, I'm just going to flash, wait here on the screen, the image of what they did with it. And yeah, it looks pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. And, you know... That's that. That's all I got to say on that. You know, I'm, I'm curious to check it out when they're all done with it. Let's move on. Oh, got to get the bell for this one. Controversial topics. Controversial topics time. Controversial topics time. So, Marilyn Manson has supposedly been canceled by everybody in the industry. So, first of all, he has been accused by his ex of sexually harassing her, uh, sexually, you know, raping her and all that jazz, you know, all that, that bad stuff. Um, I just want to take a, a, a quick couple minutes here to discuss, should we be surprised to hear that Marilyn Manson isn't a good dude? I just want to genuinely ask this question, because this is the same guy who went on a stage with a gun, we don't know if it was a real gun or a prop gun. Who knows if it was that? But even even going out on a stage with a prop gun and aiming it at concert goers and crying and being upset, what what are you trying to convey with that man? I mean, I mean, just morally, like as a person, you're gonna like possibly threaten people that paid to see you perform music like you're just a fucking idiot if that's what you're gonna do i mean that really irks me that that's what you're gonna do not to mention that i i'm positive that this dude has been doing this for years so you know what i'm glad that there are people who are coming out and and making him accountable for all those actions that he did he probably sexually harassed a shit ton of people. And nobody said anything. For years and years. And you know what? They probably tried to. And they got shunned by the industry. So I, I, I'm i not, not necessarily happy. But I, I'm just glad that he is being held accountable. Finally. For these actions that he's been doing and doing. And probably done for ever since he started his career. <sighs> Man, you know, that's that's just how I feel about that. And we'll, we'll, we'll just move on, man. Because I don't want to be here all day getting mad about that. I don't want to be getting mad about that all day. But I, I, I've said everything I had to say about that. And we're just going to move on. So, a 16-year-old, um, unfortunately, I believe this was a doctor's son <clears throat> committed suicide or not committed suicide. I don't want to say that. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> was do doing drugs and I believe it was sleeping pills and overdosed on them. And 
you know, from my understanding, this child was, you know, buying it off Snapchat and. I just need a couple seconds to process this because that that terrifies me that any child can go on Snapchat and um, buy drugs and do that. That's just really sad, man. And I, I, I you know, just, <sighs> my God. Uh, sorry about this, guys. Um, you know, my condolences to this, this woman, you know, no, no mother should ever have to go through this. And I, I'm so sorry for your loss. And, you know, it's just sad, ma'am, that some people got to go through that. <sighs> okay, let's move on before I... Cry up a storm here. <clears throat> a Wisconsin man is arrested was arrested for punching a store security staff member who reminded them to wear a mask. The city mandate the statewide mandate for Wisconsin is in effect to March third. I think it should be until this is damn fucking over. That is my opinion. <sighs> okay, first of all. This is a going to be a breakdown subject on this. Um, Wisconsin should have, from the beginning, uh, had a mask mandate from the beginning of this pandemic. Um, whether or not they had that, I, I do not 100% know. I do know there are people being er just ignorant, stupid, and just dumb, and walking around not washing their hands, um, not wearing a mask, being being inconsiderate of others, and just not considering other people during this. And that's why I've avoided going to Wisconsin so much during this for any reason. I've tried to stay at home. The fact that somebody would be so disrespectful and punch a security guard trying to tell you to be safe is completely idiotic, in my opinion. I want to directly talk to you right now, that person who did that, whoever the fuck your name is. You are a fucking idiot, and you need to get your life in check. If that's where your priority is, punching a security guard, telling you to put on a mask. I I, I mean that 100%. You are a fucking idiot. If you think that's okay to do. That's all I gotta say. Let's discuss something else as well. And this is gonna be the last controversial topic to discuss. Uh, David Letterman it was a very famous talk show host with David Late, Late Night with David Letterman. Um, and it seems now that people are digging up old interviews that he did with female, you know, personalities and celebrities. Let's just let's just cut to the cut to the chase here, guys. Um, David Letterman was always weird and just kind of came off creepy and kind of like you know, sexually harassing type and, you know. So for people to now pull these interviews up and, and now do that, you know, that's kind of crazy that people are finally understanding that what he said was creepy and weird, you know. At least people are now, you know, finally realizing, yeah, they were. And you know what? I, I, I never really watched the show. So now when I watch those interviews, I'm like, damn, dude. He does kind of come off, you know, as a creep, doesn't he? And kind of weird. So, you know, at least people are understanding that now. And they're they're saying he needs to be held accountable for that. You know, that's that's good. And that's all I got to say of that. <clears throat> the last subject 
of today that I have to discuss is the unfortunate power outages that are going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out from Texas. Um, so I have some personal friends uh, that I have on Facebook and all that from Texas, and I'm getting the updates every day of power going on and power going off, power going on, power going off, power going on. You know, it really breaks my heart that Texas is in this weird space where literally, you know, I'm getting told, you know, it's like six degrees, which is literally the same degree temperature that we're getting here in Illinois. Excuse me. That blows my mind alone that we have the same weather as Texas sometimes now. It's weird to me, you know, during this, that it's literally the same fucking temperature here in Illinois that is in Texas. Um, I just, I, I wish that, I hope everybody is being safe out there and driving slow since I, I, I'm to assume that Texas, you know, doesn't have the best plowing uh, system at all, like, you know, and, you know, I hope everybody can get through it. I hope everybody's power gets put back on and, you know, everything gets all squared away, you know, it, it just breaks my heart and, you know, my heart goes out to everybody having that issue in Texas. I wish you well. I hope you're staying safe and stay warm out there, man. You know, Texas is usually like about 50 degrees and now it's like freaking six, man. That's that's crazy, dude. So, you know, stay safe out there, everybody. And that's that's all the subjects I have for the week this week. And uh, that's all. Uh, I want to mention... At the end of this episode, that for ongoing episodes, uh, Patreon is $1. If you want to support the channel, it gives you a shout-out at the end of the video. You support me renting any movies towards, uh, you know, the channel for the future, ongoing future. You know, you support me to do any of the, these, this kind of stuff, you know, for that. And uh, that's that. Uh, I appreciate anybody that stuck by the podcast and stayed through the whole thing. If you did watch this whole episode, uh, go ahead and like the video. You know, sh- shoot me a subscription if you can. You know, hit that subscribe button. Hit the hit the bell notification button too, so you get notifications. Since YouTube has a weird system. But yeah, that's all I got to say, and I will see y'all later. <laughs>